Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back, Football Manager 19, and this is episode, well, we'll call it episode zero. This is the intro to our Football Manager 19 long-term save, and you may or may not recognize this lovely place on my screen here, but uh, we're out here at the pitch at Queen Elizabeth II Park. So let's talk about the save a little bit, and then if you don't know where we're at, we will discuss it. So in FM17, when I first started doing FM videos for my YouTube channel, I played with leads, and we did, and that was kind of like my, my short-term thing that I started with FM17. Last year with FM18, we did a journeyman save where we traveled around. We were in Sweden, we were in uh, in Spain with Villarreal, and so, you know, I was looking for what I wanted to do this year, and of course we did the save with Rangers, because I had never played in Scotland in uh, the early release save, and had a great time with that, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So I had been contemplating going back a few months when the release was imminent, you know, about 60 to 90 days out, on what I wanted to do with this particular save. And I started looking around. I was doing some Google searching because, as I've mentioned in the past, I do not know. I know a lot about the game of soccer. And, yes, I am American, so it will always and forevermore be soccer to me. I do try to call it football in my videos. Uh, but today's Sunday, in fact. So football is being played on my TV today <laughs> by teams like the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, but anyway, just just uh, picking. But uh, I do love the sport. I've played the sport. I officiated the sport. I was a FIFA licensed official uh, at lower levels. Uh, not this level, up through uh, high school in uh, here in the States. Um Played through high school, was not good enough to pursue uh, anything higher than that, and uh, so moved on with my life. Uh, but I, I started Googling, and I was looking around, and I came across an interesting article. And the article was entitled, Fan-Owned Clubs in England. And so I started reading about that. And what led me to that was a TV program that had aired here in the States um, probably five five or six months ago, and one of the clubs on there was uh, uh, Manchester, it was it was the Manchester United Football Club, uh, That's the, but the smaller one the, uh, that's owned by the fans, and they were talking in that, ep in that show how they felt betrayed by the ownership of Man United that you know it was all about money for them and they had turned their backs on the fans that had supported Man United for generations and they basically couldn't even afford to go to the games anymore and uh, you know that kind of struck home uh, because I you know I don't make a ton of money and in my job and so I can't afford hundreds of dollars to go to pro sporting events, uh, at least not very often. It, it's it's a rare occurrence. And, you know, here in Houston where I live, we have a, a pro basketball team in the NBA. We have a pro soccer team with the Houston Dynamo in the MLS. Uh, we have the Houston Texans uh, in the NFL. So, you know, we have three professional teams. Uh, well, four because we have the Houston Astros too, base, uh, Major League Baseball, sorry. And they're probably my favorite team out of the bunch. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that had that had stuck in my head. And then so I started doing some research uh, on Google and uh, came across a list, a listing of clubs owned by their fans. Well, I'm a Leeds fan. So going to any club in Manchester is very difficult because of the rivalry. Although, you know, the smaller club, I think, would have been fine. But I was looking to see what else was out there because I just, you know, I was like, oh, wow. I just, you know, assumed that, you know, all these soccer clubs, these football clubs were owned by corporations and rich individuals. And so I was really amazed when I found that there's quite a list of teams 
throughout England and Europe that are owned by the fan bases. And I said, that would be really cool. I would enjoy doing something like that. So started going through the list. And, uh, you know, I knew, I knew that none of these clubs were high enough in the, in the, in the tables, uh, in the league listings, uh, or what do they call it? The league pyramid, I guess, uh, to be in the official game of football manager 19. So I knew I had seen some information about lower league manager data databases. And so I started looking around and there are three databases either in the works or released only one has been released to date and that's the one i'm going to use and i hope it works if it doesn't then by all means we'll, we will we will definitely go back and restart this with another database but they are potentially several weeks away from being released at this point and i didn't want to wait several weeks uh, the person that released this one uh, it is on steam uh, and I will put the link uh, in the description of this video if you're interested in, in looking at it. But he says he has tested it for at least 10 seasons and has not had an issue. So we're going to give it a go. Um, I, I'm always a little leery when I'm going with something outside. Well, you know, I shouldn't even say that because if you look at like my RimWorld save, I use a ton of mods uh, because I think they make the game better. So the mod in this case is a whole database that gives us access to other teams. So this club came to my attention. I was reading through the list of uh, fan-owned clubs, and it's Infield Town. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And so I just started was re reading up on it, and I, and I love the look of the stadium with the cafe. And I just said, that's, that's kind of I impressive. I really like it. And they're, uh, they're in League 7, the Isthmus League, I think it's called. The Isthmus League. I'm going to tongue-tie that one the entire series. So hopefully we get promoted out of this really quickly. <laughs> so anyway, what I don't know, what I don't know is how the game is going to handle promotions. I know you'll get promoted, but will, you know, will we eventually expand our stadium will we build a new stadium if we get to higher levels uh, will the fans sell to a rich owner as they feel they can't maybe can't keep up uh, if we get say up to uh, you know the championship league or, or uh, the premier league one day uh, we certainly don't want to be playing in the premier league and in, in i think i think we're in a 2500 seat stadium uh, so, uh, but anyway I just thought it would be an interesting journey so whereas last year was the journeyman where we were trying to advance from club to club this one is going to be an infield town save my goal is to stay with this club the duration of the save and see where we can lead them so for storyline purposes I am a former player I guess because that's how you know when you set up your your coach your manager you have to give your background so this is a look at QE2 Stadium Queen Elizabeth II Stadium this is where Enfield Town plays let's get into the game itself so Enfield Town has hired me and when you are setting up your coach you have to um, give a background and whatnot so sunday league player uh let's see and oh i do speak spanish i don't know where that came from possibly from being in texas <laughs> although i am from in texas and i do not speak spanish no habla espanol um let's see so i have set myself up as a, a youth developer is my priority or is my specialty and that is it so oh and i have a national c license um, uh, evidently infield town spotted for a license for me to get uh, get the coaching job so i hope to see some infield fans uh chime in on the videos i will you know i do have a twitter feed i try to keep that updated as i release 
and it would be great over time to have some interaction with some of the players or even some of the fan ownership i think would be really really interesting and potentially very funny uh, and i hope they don't uh, i hope they're not offended uh, certainly that is not the goal and certainly i do hope that i can do them proud so with that, I just wanted to kind of give you a background on where I was coming from, what we were going to be doing in the video in this series, and uh, let's get to it. So uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode, which will be episode one, and we will hit the ground running, and we will take a look at the club and then potentially try to get our first match in. So... Thank you so much for checking this out. I hope you're excited about it. I certainly am. I'm looking forward to this. Um, and I guess real quick we can go in. I have set up the database with uh, all the leagues in England are playable down to, to level 10, which is what the database allows. I have a small database, which is still about 25,500 players. And uh, for selection purposes i have unticked the add key staff i had read somewhere on one of the uh, forum posts that you have to do that to get a good mixture of staff at every club in the lower leagues or you can just dominate too easy so you know we don't want any undue advantages and we add we did click to add players to all the lower teams so you may see some players i don't know how that works if it just takes free agents or younger players from other clubs. I don't know how it does that, but we, I haven't even looked at the club yet. So join me for the ride uh, because in the storyline, I am a former infield town player, Sunday league level, uh, which is why I didn't make it. And I have moved into coaching. Uh, I am calling the, and, and because we're wanting to stay with infield for the duration of the save, assuming they don't fire me at some point, uh, I am calling the save Hometown Hero, so not to toot my horn or anything, but that's what we're going with. It just sounded good, and so guys, thank you so much. I look forward to you joining me on this journey in this series for FM19, and we'll see you on the pitch next episode. Take care. Bye.